My educational background has really been a winding kind of path. And so I started with a BA in English, rhetoric, and Spanish minor. And that was at the University of Puget Sound, very small liberal arts college in the Northwest. And a few years after that, I received my master's in Latin American studies. And for that master's, it was a combination of geography and anthropology as a foundation at the University of Texas, Austin. After that, a few years later, after working in social work, kind of case management positions, I went into my PhD program which was in Geography and the Environment at the University of Texas, Austin. How I describe my, my job is a little more like a vocation or a calling or an intersection, if you will. So I'm a geographer and I'm a holistic practitioner. And that means a lot of my research is healing arts oriented. So meditation, ceremony, ritual, what some people may call stress relief or stress regulation practices, what I also call cultural healing ways, are really central to what I do in my practice as a consultant and a freelance um, kind of facilitator. But those are also central to my research as a geographer. And so at that nexus of holistic geography, um, holistic wellness and geography, um, I do a combination of research, um, art making, and facilitation. So those are kind of three major pathways. Yeah, I'd say that what attracted me to geography in the first place was this emphasis on humans and the environment in the sense of the physical environment and the relationship between the two. And I appreciated the interdisciplinary nature of geography as well. So when I was an English student in, for my BA, for my undergrad, I fell in love with environmental studies. And so then I thought I'd be an environmental lawyer. Right? And then I went to Latin American studies and dug deeper into geography. And so I had this really interdisciplinary path to begin with, and I had a decision to make. Do I want to choose an interdisciplinary um, discipline, like ethnic studies, cultural studies, um, African diaspora studies, or do I want to be in geography? And when I was at that point in my path, I really started to understand more about geography's emphasis on space and place, um, have a deep appreciation for how geography talks about things like race and racism, critically about culture. And so geography became my disciplinary home. At the same time, I was getting more grounded in holistic and cultural healing ways. And so for a long time, those were sep uh, not separate, but parallel paths for me. And post-PhD is when they've really become more integrated paths, I would say. I guess there were two pathways of studies as well, right? So there was the geography path, um, and how that really prepared me was to look at space and place in in a critical way and in that spatial way that geography does so beautifully. So I am truly a geography nerd, right? <laughs> Whenever I describe what I do, I am sure to mention geography as a way to share and, and lift up the discipline. And one reason for that is from my education. Um, I really, really took away so much inspiration from black geographies in particular, um, the work of Catherine McKittrick and Clyde Woods, while there's been this long, beautiful, powerful black studies tradition across different fields, what geography brings to it is this understanding of how different places still play a role, how historical creation of place impacts the present, how can we think about gentrification through that lens, cultural healing ways through that lens, has been really inspiring and instrumental. And so has the work of um, Dory Massey, um, Caitlin Cahill, uh, a lot of different feminist scholars and geographers as well have been really instrumental. Um, at the same time, a lot of my learning has happened with grassroots movements, being part of them, um, being at policy making tables, so being very much on the ground. And so sometimes when I describe my pathway as a geographer, I mention that I'm a practitioner scholar, and that's an important for me that I practice geography in a way that's very grounded and rooted and close to the ground.
Some of the words I use, one of them is social justice, like understanding social justice as a concept um, and how it plays out over space, place, and time, those key kind of um, points of geography, those key coordinates of geography is really interesting to me and important and is something I had to learn about in order to do this work. A lot of my work involves being in different spaces where different knowledges are being practiced, so academic knowledge, um, academic and activist knowledge, activist knowledge. Sometimes these spaces speak to each other, sometimes they don't, and there's a lot of navigating that's important. Place, oh my goodness. In geography, the concept of place and how it's talked about, especially in feminist geography's work, is very powerful and interesting to me from a social justice perspective, and also in black geography's work has been very instrumental in how I talk about place and how I practice across place. So for a long time, I do a lot of place-based work. So for example, now I'm in Milwaukee. A lot of my research and activism in the past was centered in Austin, Texas, two different contexts with also shared kinds of histories of gentrification and um, spatial injustice and these kinds of things. And so, how to articulate work is place-based, or your research may be place-based, but has global relevance, is a geographic skill.